Yeah. Fuck all that shit. Now I go raw dog and only your bitch. Eating the pussy like cannibalistic. Your bitch on my collar. Watch out for the lipstick. Greetings and prosperities. It's Lord Damiel and Lord Damiel's The Podcast. I'm thrilled and honored to present to you actor, director, producer, writer, and etc. etc. Mr. Lamont motherfucking Gertie. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Amar Gurdy is multi, multi-talented, but uh, he's the CEO and founder of Film Fools Productions. Um, what is the objective and the goals of Fil- Film Fools Productions? Um, just to be able to create a platform for um, other directors, new directors and filmmakers to make online content and even submit things for like festivals and things like that. Um, since we are new. Um, I have a bunch of things in the pipeline right now. I'm working on a web series. Um, started last year, but now I want to actually work with SAG for it. Okay. So I'm in the process of uh, hiring a producer to help me out with that process. Um, and then so after the web series is over, submit it to festivals, get our name out there, um, bring in more talent than what I already have on uh, my docket, if you will. And I also have a few short films, a few other web series to work on, and even a feature that's in my head currently. Nice, nice, nice. Now, um, how long have you been acting? Oh, uh, <laughs> I want to say 2008. 2008, about 10 years almost. Yeah. That's pretty good, that's pretty good. Um, who are the actors growing up that inspired you? Oh, wow. Oh. Who would I say inspired me? I would say Tom Cruise, because one of my favorite movies, still to this day, um, even I, <laughs> I joke around with my mom, and there's about a few good men. I love oh, yeah, I said that's what I can't have the truth. <laughs> Did you order the cold red? <laughs> um, Denzel, definitely. Um, recently, um, you know, Idris Elba. Yes. Um, who else is just ridiculously talented that just like mind blows me um I'd say new I'd probably say Childish Gambino okay. who I'm gonna try and hire a lawyer to sue him because he has way too much talent yeah so I think that he's actually probably taking that from other people so yeah, he's try a vampire. He's yeah. <laughs> yeah he must have drunk he can do come or something when he's younger. he can do everything I yeah. bless him Donald Glover. Donald Glover yeah yeah very talented. <laughs> bless him keep it up Childish Gambino <laughs> supporter you know um, when was it, or what triggered you to take acting seriously? What was the moment, or what were the things around you that said, you know what, I want to do this shit for real? Um, let's see. It probably was more like the support of others. Like when I was in college, we did a few plays, and from people I either loosely knew or didn't know at all, and they would come up to me after and said that I did a really good job and they liked me. Um, also, one of the directors that I worked with when I was in Utica, um, her um, grandson came up to me. I had a very small role in the play and it was like he was my favorite part of the play and that spoke to me considering how small the role is I had in that play. Um, and then just meeting different people after college and just being in the environment, doing background work, like I wanted to be in that environment. It was most alive I felt in the lab. Okay. Uh, where did you study cinematography? And what do you like about it? Um, <laughs> YouTube and um, just watching other people do um, their own work okay. from either just watching film or when I was doing background. I was just paying attention to what the actors were doing, I was paying attention to what the whole production crew was doing. Um, watching where the the camera people would set up their their shots, um, try and understand their mindset of what lenses they were using for certain angles, mm-hmm. and just like keenly listening to the director, writing down those notes, and then waiting for that episode to air to actually see how it looks from their eye. Got you. And then just doing it myself and then doing horrible, horrible angles and then learning better on what works and what doesn't. Okay, okay. 
So, uh, what are your favorite roles and how do you prepare to get into a character? Um, I would say comedy and I'm trying to do more dramatic stuff. Um, I want to really do something like where I'm a villain. Okay. Um, that seems <laughs> that seems like that'd be fun. Um, in terms of what I do and to get into a character, I try and really live that. Um, so if I have a role where I am with somebody romantically, um, I try and like feel like how I would feel like with so I would take what I then my experience with the other relationships I've had and I put it onto that and then put on what would I do if I was in that current situation in the script with on uh, how I did with um, the girlfriends I've had in the past okay. if we were in that same situation and it seemed to work so far now do you uh, when you get your roles are you one of those actors who stay into the role until the whole thing is finished like 24 hours or can you separate yourself from the character I can separate myself from the character um, it, did, it all depends on the certain scene um, certain scenes um, and certain characters it's easier for me to jump into especially if that character is either remotely close to my personality naturally mm -hmm. um, or if it's a situation that I have some type of experience with if they aren't or I don't have any experience with it'll take me a while to get into character um, before but once I'm in it will take a while to get back to where I am okay Heath Fledger syndrome <laughs> <laughs> Um, how and when did you get your first break into acting? Um, let's see. It must seem like my first, like, semi-big break would have been, I think it was either two or three years ago, when I got two um, off-Broadway shows right off the bat, and had a pretty good crowd, and again, more people who I didn't know came up to me and ex ex expressed um, how well I did mm -hmm. and how enjoyable the whole experience of the show was and it just motivated me more and I would say it was more so the second off-Broadway show that I had um, with the director George Trim um, he was trying to start this whole series he wrote a book he made a play mm -hmm. and um, I don't know if he's still doing the movie for it, but it was a great experience working with him and doing that. Um, can you explain like the the nerves and the whole experience the first time you performed? <laughs> it's weird. I've also done um, sports in um, in high school and some college, mm -hmm. and it's somewhat the same. Okay. Um, that nerves before like a big um, event or meet or and then going on stage. It's butterflies, and for some people, I guess it makes you nervous, but for me, it kind of is like fuel. Okay. Because that moment before you step on stage, or if you step on to the track, I ran track, um, it's, it's like a concentrated focus, because you're so internalized, and you just, you stop being aware of everything around you. So if you're on stage, it's just, that bright light and then everything around you is dark and then it snaps into focus and then you're just there and then in terms of like running it's again everything's quiet you set up you get down and then boom you go and so it, it helps me focus and it's like a nervous fuel I want to say yes so yeah it just helps drive at least drive me forward I don't know how it works for other people so you basically you you uh, pressure feeds you. Yes. Uh, pressure does the opposite of what it does to most mundane people. That, that you call that a star. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you explain the mindset and the determination needed to pursue your goals? You have to be almost um, one-minded, mm -hmm. just because there are a lot of obstacles that happen and. You also have to stop comparing yourself to other people because there are some people who either are lucky and talented, talented, or just lucky. 
um, and to make it in this business or, and for the most part most businesses you have to be somewhat lucky and a lot of people think that luck is this magical thing that has been gifted by the gods but luck is given to people who put themselves in the right situation so you have to be patient with it because there are some people who will be able to find a great audition at the right time submit at the right time so they're able to be seen at a certain um, time slot and the casting director loves them and because they haven't seen someone who can do a similar a similar performance yes. earlier on and then they become in love with that person and that role can promote them can push them into meeting a good agent or into a great situation and so you just have to keep playing the numbers okay. and just stick with it because there are going to be ups and downs like even if you start off really high and get everything you want right away there's going to eventually be a low point but as long as you keep pushing with that same energy you had when you started that low point's not going to last that long okay um i want to talk about your younger years if we can okay and i want to know how was it growing up um and did you have a good support system around you oh yeah, I had a very good support system to the point where it was annoying. <laughs> um, my mother was all about education and other things, um, mostly education. Uh, she tried to support me for like my extracurriculars, for sports and things like that. But her main focus was um, education. And at the moment I was struggling with anything in school, mainly math, because I hate math and it was horrible. Yes. Um, she would instantly either put me in some type of program to do that or talk to a teacher for them to figure it out. Did you go to the, the Saturday school in St. Raymond's High School? I had to go to that. I did that a few times. Yeah. I also did a bunch. Um, I did the Huntington Learning Center. Yeah, me too. That was crazy. In the summer. I did Kumon. Um, what else? I hated Kumon. Like, and it's funny because I think it is like Japanese orientated, and it's like one of the things I, one of the few things I hate about <laughs> <laughs> anything Japanese oriented. <laughs> Other than that, I'm all for it. Yeah. Um, because as a little kid, like some of the packets I give is like the, this thick, like every yeah. time. And I just look at it and I'd be like, why? Yeah, you know, I want to <laughs> play a little bit too. <laughs> but yeah, um, my mom always supported me for everything that I did. Um, plays that I went to, she'd make sure to get as many <clears throat> people as possible to get there. Um, and she'd be supportive for all, almost all of my decisions. Even if she didn't like it at first, she would try and figure out a mindset of uh, either a compromise between the two of us or figure out a way how it would still benefit her. In okay, the long run. <laughs> I hear you, I hear you. So have you always been um, ambitious as a youth or did that transition happen as you got older? I would say we got older because other than math, as we stated before, most things came somewhat easy. Mm -hmm. So I really didn't have much of a drive to do a lot of things. Um, even things I enjoyed um, for like sports, I could do certain things easier and so I wouldn't work out in things for that stuff. So once I got into the higher levels, it became harder and then I would lose interest in it because then that meant I had to work for it. And yeah. same for school. I never really did my homework because I could pass with like an 80 or 100 for quizzes and tests. So not doing like homework. Mm -hmm. didn't really seem that big of a deal because I can make up for it from listening in class and doing the school work from there. Um, yeah, so <laughs> the motivation <coughs> didn't come until afterwards when getting hit with reality in the real world, world that you actually do have to try for a lot of things. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the ambition definitely came later. <laughs> You sure um, the ambition didn't come when you had your first white woman? Because <laughs> that inspired me, I'll tell you that much. The Nubian queen? Yeah. <laughs> My albino Nubian queen. <laughs> um, did you have uh, temptations as a youth? Were you uh, tempted to do any drugs or join gangs or cut? And uh, if you did, like, uh, you know, talk about that. Let me know how you eventually grew out of those situations uh in terms of gangs not really because of um, my family um and their colorful past 
they make sure that I stay away from that. So I think the way that they did that was to, even if they didn't understand it, they like let me, I want to say they cultivated some of my um, hobbies. So like I was into anime and stuff like that. So they pushed me off into that and video games to do that. Um, to the point where I think, like, going down the line, my mom regretted the whole video game thing. <laughs> and even I, somewhat, because I realized it's a trap as an adult. Like, you still play video games today, but you have to work to get the money to pay for the video games. But then you don't have the time to play the video yeah. games, and you're still buying the video games. And then it's... Yeah, it's so just horrible. addiction. It's a horrible addiction. <laughs> so, technically, I am doing drugs. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, in terms of gangs and stuff like that, that didn't really, it's not really a factor. I knew a lot of people in gangs, it's still cool with them today, um, but it wasn't an interest really. Um, and then in terms of drugs, I haven't dabbled in anything like super heavy, um, marijuana of course. Um, I want to say I've tried a few Looks other like things. A um, shrooms once, but it was bad trick because I didn't I didn't like read the instruction manual, so I didn't know that it didn't kick in like somewhat right away, and I had the horrible experience of going to see a 3D movie after eating it, and then I realized that oh it takes a few minutes for this to actually kick in, and I was it was a mess. I was crying, so I want to try it again in a very in a nice controlled Close environment. Yes, now yes. that I know what happens, um. I hope my mother doesn't watch this, but um, <laughs> I tried cocaine once because it was my friend's birthday and I wasn't going to see her for a while. It was the last time she was going to be celebrating her birthday that I knew of in New York before she went back to um, Pittsburgh. Yeah. She's currently still there. That and, place is uh, so fucking far for her to be Pennsylvania. That shit's like know. <laughs> 20 hours away, 10 hours away. <laughs> the toll getting there was like over like $30. It was Jesus. ridiculous. Um, but yeah, so her last... Um, birthday celebration in New York City um, a few years back. I tried it a few bumps. Didn't like it because uh, I was already I already smoked, drank, and I was at that nice equilibrium of being really nice, of that high and it drunk. It was, it was good. Yeah. And even though technically I wasn't sober, it made me feel sober and I couldn't get back to that point and I had to mentally tell myself I had to stop smoking Slow and drinking <laughs> because I was probably going to get alcohol poisoning Poison. because I, was, I couldn't physically get back to where I was. It made me angry. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Um, I'm not an upper person. Um, to me, cocaine is good if you're really getting drunk and shit and you're like at that fucked up point. And then you have to like probably do something else. Yeah, and you got to go home, like mm -hmm. you go to Co-op City, you take that bump and, you know, keeps you up for the ride. Yeah, so that did help me get back home. But yeah, but, I agree with you. It, it uh, totally... I'll never do it again. <laughs> it totally fucks. It's like drinking coffee. It's like, no, I want to feel euphoric. I don't want to be up. Now I want to wash dishes and put the socks together. And then I learned, and then I just, it was a whole stupid experience. I learned so much about Coke a little bit after that. Like, first of all, I didn't know where she got it from, so I didn't know the dealer. If you're going to do cocaine, like, I don't suggest doing it. Yeah. You need to know your dealer because you don't know who cuts the thing, and then yeah. you can get a bad bag. Be sniffing asbestos. You don't want that. So, yeah. So in terms of drugs, I'll stick with my alcohol and uh, marijuana. So the weed, the ganja, the <clears throat> Mary Jane, <laughs> yes, all that good stuff. Now we can. I would like to get a little, you know, intimate. Um, far as I have a younger brother at 14 years old, mm -hmm. and you know, it's hard because they're teenagers and they go through that, you know, transition of puberty and <laughs> thinking they know what's the best thing to be grown or whatever. So um, if you could talk about your family for a minute. Mm -hmm. Has what happened to your father motivated you, inspired you to stay on the right path? Because most kids, you know, they have bullshit gangsters in their family <laughs> and it keeps them in this middle path of fuckery. Yeah. But when you have the realness, like you say, even with your mom's and your mother's family, it's like, no, you know, you're going to do this. And, you know, and I could see like in your DNA, you're really cool, like you don't really have, you, you're good in your skin, you're comfortable mm -hmm. in your skin. So did that tragedy help you stay on the right road? Or it was just more of, you know, your, your, your family? I would say it was more of my family. Because okay. um, like after that tragedy, I would say I was pretty much 
if I was coasting before, I was coasting even more after that. But how old um, were you? I was 13. Me and father passed 13, away? yeah. How old are you? I am 27 now. I, had for, I almost forgot. I thought it happened before you was born. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Oh, wow. So you was in the mix of it. Yeah. Yeah. I told you, um, I know, I don't know why, because we was fucked up that day, but I remember you, you broke it down to me real quick, never forgot it. And then, like, ten years later, he was like, you ever heard of BMF? I was like, yeah, I heard of BMF. He was like, yeah, yeah, I'm the exact. So, bro, I'm sitting on the couch, um, smoking weed, and somebody sent me the goons of the industry. I don't know if you've ever seen this shit, Lamar. I, I think I have. And I'm smoking, and it's like four or five sections. So they'll start with, like, say, King Tut mm-hmm. and niggas that shot Pac and Rob Pac and shit. And then it got to Diddy, and it got to an individual named Wolf. And through Wolf, I see your name. <laughs> <laughs> I see your name. So I'm like, wait a minute. No. And then they show a picture of your pops that you look exactly like. <laughs> so as soon as I'm seeing this, I'm hearing your voice be back in 420 in my building, you know, and I'm like, yo, this shit is real. Like he wasn't bullshitting. And like I said, you meet a lot of people and there's a lot of people. We all have, you know, brothers and sisters and associates that, you know, put in work and all that. But it's rare when you get those real people, you know, and all I could say, you know, I, I never met your father or whatever, but he seemed like a real loyal motherfucker maybe to a fault you know definitely but i see that's in your bloodline too you're not a bullshit and unfortunately you're loyal, you know <laughs> <laughs> so you know i just wanted for the for the youth out there you know this is a son of a phenomenal woman and a gangster father and you see he's comfortable in his skin he's pursuing things he's ambitious and he has goals this is what real people do so, you know, you young people out there, get your shit together, figure out what you want to do, and work hard and accomplish it. There is no failure if you put on your own, you know. So, um, you went to St. Raymond's, correct? Yeah. The Ravens. Uh, how was that? Did you experience anything weird with the Monsignor? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Um, the only, like, weird thing that happened, but it was mainly just jokes between us, like, because I'm not Catholic. And like they kept asking me for to go into like confession and stuff like that, and then like I was like, mm, nah. Uh, but no, they're, they're I don't need no immunity, or you know, <laughs> I'm not facing no charges. Luckily, there were no scandals during my four years and things like that. There is a rumor going on for something that happened a little bit after mm-hmm. um, we left, and I don't know the validity of it. Um, so <clears> yeah, my cousin, he graduated. Damn, I don't even know. I think he's 22 so maybe he graduated three years ago mm-hmm. and um something came out about the monsignor that he was um you know doing what they do best and, blessing the young youth. yes yes <laughs> on his knees but uh, being the saint ways raven uh how did you realize the experience while you was in it or did you graduate and then look back and was like wow that was a cool experience and you know um it prepared me or do um, you feel that it prepared you I feel it prepared me. I had a lot of fun there. I learned a lot there. Um, the teachers that they have there were, are amazing. Um, to this day, I still am in contact with a few of the teachers. Um, and I visit every now and then. Um, and I can't recommend that school enough. I had both of my little cousins go there. Um, one of them who just graduated, he didn't graduate there because he eventually moved to Texas. but. My other little cousin, he's currently enrolled in St. Raymond's. Um, it's a great school. Um, they actually do care, because I've been to a few schools where they say that they care, and really only like a few teachers actually give a damn. Yeah, they got paid. <laughs> check is clear. You know, um, but yeah, they... Then it's a close environment, so yeah. it's more intimate. Yeah. Being that... Well, I think they try to... They built three floors now on that motherfucker. Yeah, it pissed me off, because that school... School was good when I went there, but it looks amazing now, and they have so many more programs, and it really yeah. pisses me off. Yeah, well, I always go to the summer programs. I, I didn't know. I was like, this is a high school. It's, one, it's a hallway. <laughs> it's a long hallway. But, yeah, you know, finally they're putting all that tuition money to good use. Mm-hmm. Um, so from high school, did you – where did you go from high school? Um, I went to Utica College. Yeah, that's a uh, SUNY school? No, a okay. private school. Okay. Um, yeah, private. How many semesters did you do that for? Two. Two. How was that college experience like? Um, it was pretty good. Um, Did you I catch the clap no, at any time? No, no. I was safe. I was the safest. Um, 
but I want to say that I don't know if this is just um, because I went to St. Raymond's or the type of school that I went to. Um, in terms of like workload, high school was harder. I want to mm-hmm. say. Yeah. Um, I heard from a few few people that it's almost universal that they feel like that. Like high school is harder than um, college. It's just that the hard thing about college is the management of time because you have a lot of freedom in college. <laughs> like yeah. almost criminal how much freedom you have. Um, and then you still have to get certain um, things done. Like I procrastinated so much on a few projects in college um, where it was a ton of papers and I did it literally like the hour before and still got a really good grade on it. And I don't think I would have been able to do that in high school. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, college, I feel like it's more to prepare you for how real life is. Because when you're an adult, you really don't have somebody like on top of you, like you having high school to do certain things. You just have to get shit done. Okay. And if you don't get it done, then it's not going to get done. And then you won't be successful or productive. Um, I learned a lot there in terms of life lessons and I met a lot of great people and I feel like that's pretty much the whole reason of college to meet good people good contacts and also to learn a few things were you pursued by any fraternities um a few and why didn't you mess with that wasn't really my thing like I I played around with the idea for two of the fraternities but not hazing <laughs> I just, like, I understand the the brotherhood of it and, like, the benefits that it brings. But you could just, do it on your own. Yeah, it just, really. just wasn't really my thing. Yeah. I got a, uh, I don't know if you ever heard, the Fraternity of the Feather. Mm-hmm. Uh, Damon Dash and a couple of niggas is in that. And I think it's just tribalism. Like, sometimes people just want to be a part of something. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the people, to me, is just like a 20 insecure people with a leader who's half insecure, <laughs> and he imposes his will on the weak. And once you have a, per- once they see somebody that's, they see the aura of a leader, they're gonna try to tear you down. And then when I seen it, I said, well, you know, if I'm really this person, if you want me to be a candidate because you think I fit what I need, then I can do that on my own without being embarrassed and, you know you trying to take my bitch and smack me with a fish and all that dumb shit. Um, Yeah, it it had some shit. They had like a big ass log and you know, all the, I guess, prospects, whatever you call them, they had to carry the log and they was beating them and shit. And I was like, we niggas, what about we insinuating slavery for? You know? But I don't knock people who's in fraternities. I have a cousin that's in a frat. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, everything is not for everybody. And um, you know, if you do pursue it, it's cool. Uh, I was thinking about the Masons, but by the time the Masons come and tell me, I, I probably won't even want the opportunity. You know, I'm not trying to be 35 and going through rankings and all that shit. Mm. But um, now from, what was the school you went to again? Um, Utica. Utica. Now you did two semesters in Utica mm-hmm. and you came back to the city? Yeah. Okay, and where was your mind state then? Um. I was going to go to a local college, work, and just focus on acting. Um, but then I got a pretty good job opportunity at the time. Did that while I was still doing um, acting classes at the acting studio with um, James Price, okay. really good teacher. Um, and then the opportunities for the job kept coming up, and then. I focused a lot on that, but I still wanted to act. And then I got to the point where it, I realized that I wasn't doing any more acting. I was just doing the job. Mm-hmm. And I think I was just doing that for, I think, maybe like two years, maybe, I want to say. And I eventually had to leave because I wasn't getting any acting done at all. And that was the whole point of me coming back home to do that, and I wasn't doing it. So, what is your favorite part of the art of acting? Do you, are you more of the actor, or do you like being behind the camera and producing, directing? Um, I want to say both. Um, I get a certain amount of pleasure of doing both, like writing a script or just like a um, concept of a world 
and then working with somebody else to help make it into an actual script is very fun. And then you get to, because you get to see it grow from just an idea that was in your head and then a collaboration with another person um, if you do that. And then to actually see it live is amazing. And then also there are times where I don't want to be behind the camera. I don't want to edit. I don't want to do any of that. And just being able to act and look at me in another person's skin is amazing as opposed to having all hands on deck like there's a certain amount of there's a different pleasure that i get from both um i don't know which one i prefer more because there are some times where like <laughs> this is bad but i don't like giving away all of the power i like having it to be able to control the way i want my world to go like i'll take suggestions and I will honestly put it into consideration and sometimes I'll even change it based on those suggestions but I just like having like the final say for that thing and then other times like I just like being an actor and not doing all the other stuff and not have to worry about all that other now um do you how many scripts do you have? um not counting the different episodes for the web series extras I'll just count that as one um I've got four other, so total five, um, and ones that are actually complete. I would say, out of those five, three are complete. Okay. So, um, with the Film Fools Productions, mm -hmm. how did that come about? Was it you by yourself, or was it a conglomerate of people? And like, what sparked the idea? Um, I would say it was right after I left that. Um, the job that I had before that I wasn't doing any acting in and then one of the people who used to work at that job um, he had a job opportunity which was overpaying me um, I was doing my job but they were paying me a lot and they wanted to renegotiate my contract which would pay me a whole lot less and I didn't want to do that so I got laid off understandably um, but I was able to save a, a good amount of money and I bought my I started buying my own equipment and I started talking to a few friends and I wanted to start doing skits to make a YouTube channel to help start getting the ball rolling because like I said I stopped doing acting and I wanted to it was my way of like slowly getting back into it by creating my own stuff um, along with auditioning and so started doing a few horrible like the, the skits ideas were, were good but like the execution was horrible um, the editing was rough. It was just a rough experience on the first few videos. Um, and then I just took a step back, didn't really have a full name for it, didn't have a full logo. I think I went through like maybe 10 logos mm -hmm. until I got to the one that I'm stuck on now. Um, I like that one, by the way. Yeah. I was peeping, I said, oh, maybe you want to come up. <laughs> um, and then the name. Sorry, I can't give you credit because it was either two people who helped me with this name, either Jeriel or my friend Rob. I don't know who came up with the full concept, but we had a whole discussion on like coming up with the name, and Film Fools became the actual name for it. I liked it; it made sense because we originally just wanted to just do all skits, um, and so that's how that got started. Um, even though I took some of the videos off, I kept some of them just to show the progress of how it went from this to that. And I'm proud to say that like the quality of my videos have gone up significantly from those first few videos. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, as long as you see some progression, you know you're doing the right thing. <laughs> now, um, do you sit down with your team and, and write things together, or it's a little bit of individualism and they come together and, look, I got this. and. Add on um, it's mostly individualism. Sometimes we do come together and come up with certain ideas. Um, they like they'll throw skit ideas at me, or we'll work out some. Um, but for the most part, we all just like come up with an idea, try and perfect it as much as we can on our own, and then bring it off towards everybody else and get their feedback and things like that. Okay. Now, um, what do you want your viewers to to feel when they watch your work? anything. If we're doing um, comedy, I want you to get the jokes, I want you to laugh. If we're doing a dramatic piece, I want you to cry. I want you to put your your shoes 
your feet in the shoes of um, whatever character is going through whatever situation that we have. Okay. Um, what do you want your overall legacy to be? Um, it's kind of bad. I like the blueprint of um, what Tyler Perry did. I don't agree with all the things that he actually does, but in terms of like business standpoint, I respect it. He made his own production company. He makes movies whether you think they're good or bad. Um, he keeps actors in work. Um, and he, he's built a legacy for himself, and I want something similar. I want to be able to have my production company help newer actors, newer directors, and stuff like that get their um, start, and to be able to cultivate that, and be able to become a bridge between like the indie and student filmmakers, and be, be able to bridge them with like full-time networks and things like that. Be able to do that. Okay. Um. Can you give any word of advice to you know the younger kids out there who's you know trying to pursue acting or maybe didn't think about acting until they seen this interview? Um, you gotta create. Um, don't be afraid to take classes, even if you're talented. And people have said you're talented. Um, you gotta still be open to take classes, learn from others, steal from others. Um, try and create your own work um, because when certain things become slow you can't just sit there and wait for the opportunity to come sometimes you have to create the opportunity um, and the best way to improve in anything whether it's a sport um, um, education anything is to by doing that so if the roles aren't coming in as fast as you like make the role yourself and then act out in it Great advice, thank you. Um, now I want to say a couple words and you can say the first thing that comes to your head. Okay. Success. Oh, I'm a troll, so... <laughs> you said that and I was like, I need to think of something serious to say. <laughs> and it just didn't work. Um, I don't know, Spider-Man just came to my mind because hey. I'm going to see that movie Spider next Man. week. He's successful, <laughs> you know? It's a it's horrible. Multi-movie franchise. Horrible answer, though. <laughs> um, love. Uh, work. Deceit. Failure. Violence. Money. Mm. Jesus. Legacy. Blank on that one. I have to say family. That's the next thing mm. to do right now. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. I thought of that. Um, Lamont Gertie. Entrepreneur. Nice. Nice. Well, this is Lord Damiel's The Podcast. We had Lamont Gertie. Thank you for having me. Movie producer, actor, amongst other things. And um, hopefully he'll come on again. Um, I'll have all his information and all his links in the bottom of the comment video. Um, please like, you don't have to subscribe, and um, you know, follow him, he's, he's doing it. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, man. You know, no problem. You know, <laughs> blessings and prosperities, and uh, you know, stay out of trouble. And the life you save might be your own. Thank you. It's deep. In space, I mean outer. You see me just cooking, just pass me the powder. I fly autopilot. You swimming like flounder. She throwing it back, then of course I'm a powder. Knocking out the pussy like a name is Ronda. Going low like auto. That's without the promo. Trying to catch a case and nigga get a lawyer. Cause I'm getting rowdy. Fuck the law and order. Buy a bottle, house meet at the corner. If you trying to die, we'll meet up at the corner. I catch you sleeping, ripping out your corner. You're susceptible in your peripheral. That shit is typical. Let that shit back. You have been right out that's my whole gang. Just cause I'm black, it don't mean I can't hack. Already fucked up and it's only pregame. Yo, bitch is feeling all up on the white. Reach for my collar, I'm ripping your chain. Slid down the rest, make sure to hit the vein Locked in my basement, so let's play again My idol is beeping, my mind is deranged Head on the sick, touch the back of my brain She blowing me down, blast her head like a bank Face on the right, like she did the cocaine Good afternoon, America This is Mike Hunt here 
Live with President Kennedy, these nuts. These nuts, thank you for coming. No, thank you for having me. We are live, so if you have any questions for these nuts, please tweet them at FilmFools with the hashtag AskTheseNuts. Now, nuts, can I call you nuts? Of course. I don't want anybody to feel like I'm unapproachable. I, I just want everybody to know that these nuts are for everybody. Out of all the other presidential candidates, you seem the most likable. Why do you suppose that is? I'm going to answer your question with a question. Now, who doesn't like these nuts? Whether you're a senior citizen or a toddler, you're going to love these nuts. That is an undeniable fact. Considering that this was really a two-person race before you entered between Hillary and Trump, what do you have to say to people that think you're just a celebrity or even a troll feeding off your internet popularity? You know, I knew you were going to ask that question today, and honestly, I wish people would just stop putting me in the box, you know? I mean, just because I have some celebrity, it doesn't mean that I'm any less of a valid candidate for presidency. I mean, they said the same thing about Ronald Reagan, and you know how that ended. So you're comparing yourself to Ronald Reagan? I'm not saying that. These nuts are bigger than Ronald Reagan. Frankly, these nuts are bigger than anything you've ever seen before. So what do you say your advantage is over Hillary Clinton? Well, it's simple really. I have something that she doesn't. These nuts? No. I have a simple game plan to turn this country back around. I see. So what's your game plan? Well, it's a simple game plan, really. Nut up or shut up. Frankly, over the past years, America's lost its balls. And who better to get America's balls back than these nuts? Well said. So how do you feel you stack up to presidential candidate Donald Trump? <laughs> <sighs> Honestly, I'm not even worried about Donald Trump. He's running his own slander campaign against himself every time he opens his mouth. I see you garnered huge support already, and you're only three inches in. I'm sorry, three weeks in. Russell Simmons has openly showed his support for you on Twitter. Why do you suppose that is? None of this was an accident. I actually started campaigning extremely early, and I garnered a huge following because of it. Actually, my first campaign was run by Weldon the Great. Interesting. I wasn't aware of this fact. Really? We actually have the clip of the campaign ad. Really? Let's uh, roll the clip. Oh! Cause some came in the mail today. No, I These nuts! <laughs> Got him! <laughs> this was paid for by These Nuts for America. That is a strong campaign ad. Well, since this is live, Let's get some questions from our audience via Twitter. Swim criminal wants to three acts. Nuts. What do you think is the most important issue Americans are facing today? I would have to say just, you know, underappreciation of these nuts. Americans don't appreciate these nuts. Another Twitter question we got here. Wax on, wax off, jacks off, acts nuts. When you're not campaigning, what are you doing in your spare time? Well, um, I play a lot of video games with my running mate, uh, Anya Chin. Um, we're very competitive. We play a lot of games like um, Gears of War just came out. We play that a lot. Our last question of the evening comes from the Twitter handle, BBWLover78. BBWLover78 asks, nuts. What are your feelings about universal health care? I feel like everybody should have health care. I feel like universal health care is a good thing to do. And the fact that people don't want to have it and they're against it, they just sound extremely salty to me. These nuts aren't salty. Indeed. These nuts aren't salty. That's all the time we have. Nuts, thanks again for coming by. No, thank you. And anytime you want these nuts, all you gotta do is ask and I'll come right away. Good night, America. This is Mike Hunt, signing off. Aren't you the guy that interviewed these nuts? Nobody's gonna watch this video. I'm gonna get like three views. Aren't you the guy that works on ESPN? You know what? <laughs> <laughs>